Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm VB. Welcome to Castlevania 101. Um, so just to do some intro quick introductions, I'm VB. Like I said, I speedrun. I have speedrun Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance, and then a little bit of Dawn of Sorrow and Order of Ecclesia myself. Next, buddy. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, hey, I'm Dragon Blitz. I mostly speedrun Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, I have dabbled in a handful of other like GBA Vanias and some of the DS Vanias, but not really good at them. I just like them. They're cool games. All right. I'm Clage. Uh, I speedrun Castlevania Bloodlines. I've also speedrun uh, Rondo of Blood and CB1. And uh, I'm going to be forced to run Soten at some point, according to the person <laughs> next to me. <laughs> so that'll be in like a month. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm Rom Scout. Um, also mainly Symphony of the Night Runner, but I have done a lot of Castlevania <laughs> games. Yeah. Um, all all of the GBA and DS games I've ran at some point. Uh, NES games I've dabbled in, so yeah. I, I, I know ev something about every Castlevania game, at least. <laughs> all right, I'm Darrenville. Um, I picked up Circle of the Moon just last year. I'm pretty new to Castlevania speedrunning. Um, I'm a big fan of the series. Like, I've definitely played most every one of the games, and, like, I just love the series in general. Um, but, yeah, just circle the moon for the moment. I've thought about CV4 recently, but we'll see in the future. All right, so that's everyone. So uh, just to get this out there, throughout this uh, whole panel, we kind of want to do a freeform discussion, just talk about our games, talk about the series. So if you ever have any questions, don't be afraid to raise your hand. Uh, we'll try to get to you as soon as possible. Um, to start off, I'd like to ask, or just congratulate Clay and Darrenville on their great runs from earlier today. Thank you. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, very oh, yeah. great runs. Yeah, thanks. Those are awesome. Uh, is there anything you guys want to say about your runs or your games in general? You can go first. Sure, yeah. Um, I thought it was a really great run. Doing a sub-30 magician mode is always pretty hype, um, especially a 28. I was feeling a 27. I kind of peeked over at the timer, but I kind of noticed the big bone RNG wasn't really going my way. So <laughs> we ended up with a low 28, which is still pretty good. There was a few very clutch moments. I remember I missed a summon input. Um, the very, very last one, and I got a whip out, and the bat was coming right for me right afterwards, and I was like, I really need to get this summon input, or I'm dead. <laughs> so <laughs> The fact that you finished is uh, kind of a feat in and of itself, because yeah, there's a lot can, of really risky stuff yeah. you have to do. Yeah. That category is absolutely brutal. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it can be very, very risky. And um, yeah, other than that, the Camilla fight, I got like, for some reason, I just let go of the jump button a little bit, and I got bubbled right in the face. And that does a ton of damage. Anything after that, and I'm dead too. So as soon as Camilla got to the left side and started doing the laser attack, I was like, thank God. <laughs> 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 I mean, if she does the like little swoop attack, that's fine too. But if she would have started coming back to the right, I would have been like, oh, please no, because that's summoning more bubbles, more trouble to come with those because they, they can home into you pretty pretty well. Whoever developed those bubbles, or you know, they need a raise <laughs> for sure. Um, my run, that was my, I think that's my 10th run into GDQ, if I'm counting right, and it's, it's the best one I've ever done, uh, by a pretty wide margin. Uh, Bloodlines is notoriously brutal as a speed run because any incidental damage just completely lessens what you can do in terms of being fast and being effective, and I, I've played it enough that I have a backup plan for everything, but you, you're much more open to snowballing mistakes once you make one in that game, so. Stage four is pretty crazy. Yeah. Stage four is stage four is always terrifying in a marathon because it's if I miss blade skip or die in in the nightmare room, which is the room with the rotating platforms and the skeleton mace uh, enemies, that is that is the worst place in the game to die um, because you lose all your sub weapon ammo. The only thing you have is the boomerang. You're going to get a whopping four uses out of it. It does no damage, um, and, and you aren't going to be given back a fully upgraded weapon. You're going to have basically short whip for that entire section, and it's just an absolute nightmare on expert. On normal, it's not as punishing because you don't have the bats spawning, but uh, that run went phenomenal. Um, for reference, I did a 24-hour a stream not too long ago to practice for, for the event, um, and that would have been the third fastest run out of 40 that I did in a 24-hour time period. Uh, anything that's, that's sub-31 is a phenomenal marathon run in that game. I mean, it, you have to be deathless, otherwise you wouldn't clip sub-31, and... Uh, just I'll take that every single time I hit every trick that I wanted to have and uh 
it was a really, really clean run. And then just by trying to get the last bit of explanation in on Drac Form 3, I stopped paying attention and, like, walked too far forward and started taking a bunch of I was like, oh, hey, let's not do this now. So <laughs> I got to have at least some bit of, of intensity that everyone else could tell was a tense moment, not just me praying something didn't go wrong on a, on a subtle skip or something. So super happy with that. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, I actually had a question for both of you guys. Um, how did the incentives plan like pan out for both of you? Were you both happy with the runs that you guys got to do over the other one? Yeah, yeah. I um, I've done both Morris and Lacard once prior to this, but Morris hasn't been since my very first GDQ in 2014. So that that runs evolved a lot since I did it last. So it got to look a lot more clean, and uh, and Mer Morris is just safer. Um. Lacard bleeds really bad in that game, and and if you take it like if I would have taken that kind of damage in stage four that I did with Morris, like no chance I don't die. Like Morris would have been dead probably two hits prior to that, or Lacard would have been hit uh, dead two prior hits to that because he just everything does like five seven bars to him in expert mode. It's awful, um, and and the Lacard run would have looked very similar to what it did in, in SGDQ 2016. I, I've optimized minor things on it, but it's all stuff that's not really marathon safe, so it, it wouldn't have got to shine very much. So I, I was super happy that Morris sniped at the end, to be honest. Cool. Yeah, similarly, somebody ended up sniping Magician Mode, so, well, I guess the other way around, they sniped Fighter Mode so Magician Mode could get in. Um, but yeah, it was... Because I thought I was going to be doing fighter mode for a while there. And, like, it's a pretty legit run. And I thought it would fit in well with the rest of the Castlevania just because it's a little more straightforward, just whip, sub-weapon kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, Magician mode is definitely more of the showcase of all the glitches and the warps and all the crazy stuff that makes what that game is all about as a speed run. So I was, I was happy to do Magician mode, yeah. And can I ask uh, both of you, what drew you to those games in particular? Was it just games you played when you were younger or you thought they were cool speedruns? Why those two Castlevanias? Uh, yeah, I could start. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, I mean, I just really liked the game as a kid, for sure. Um, but other than that, I got invited to do a like relay race type thing last year to uh, pick up a Castlevania game. And I was kind of debating it a little bit. I was kind of like, ah, no, I'm not really all that interested. But I kind of looked back at all the Castlevanias and I saw Circle of the Moon. And I was like, man, I really have not played this game in a long time. Like, I should just, like, pick it up just because, like, casually. And I ended up looking at the speed run for it. And it was one of Garnetrex's video, and I saw the warps and all the crazy stuff. And I was like, you know, I've never really learned a game like this where there's these weird glitches and stuff. Mainly it's just Mega Man X stuff. Like, it's really straightforward, just, like, dashing and jumping, shooting, platforming kind of thing. So I kind of wanted to branch out a little bit, and um, I think that's just kind of what drew me to it, was want the like, desire to branch out to something else. Um, so I, I grew up in the 80s and, and loved CB games from the first time I played one, but ironically, Bloodlines was the last classic Castlevania I played. I didn't play it till I started speedrunning it. Um, and that came about because when I really started getting into speedrunning, uh, I got into speedrunning because I, I played competitive fighting games for 15 years, and there's a there was very minor crossover between the two scenes back when I started around 2010, but the most notable was Josh the Funk Doc, who at the time ran and held all the major records for 1, 3, and 4 all at once. Um, and uh, people would pester him all the time because they're like, when are you going to do Bloodlines? When are you going to do Bloodlines? And he, oh, he always talked about how his Sega stuff was in storage, and... He's just like, I had just kind of gotten into speedrunning. Uh, I picked up Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, which was a game I liked as a kid, and it was a really friendly speedrun game to start out in. I actually uh, had world record in that for like three months, and then some guy named Feasel put me in my damn place. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Josh just, I was always in Josh's stream. I was a moderator, and, and he was kind of one of the first streams I really watched regularly. And he was like, hey, Clay, you should do Bloodlines. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, I like CB games. The The first time I ever really dabbled in any speedrunning is I really wanted to see CB4 be speedrun because forever there was no speedrun of it on SDA. It didn't exist. It was one of the last, last classic Castlevanias to actually get a recorded run. Um, and that was like back when I was in college. So I'm like, that'd be fun. I, 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 I remember this game being cool and I had no idea what I was getting into at all. <laughs> um, but... Once I started learning about the game and, and how it was, what really got me hooked on it was that it was classic Castlevania, but it wasn't 
damage boost Castlevania. The the NES Vanias and CV4 to a little bit lesser extent now. It used to have a lot more blatant damage boosts in it. Um, they were all about, you know, you skip giant sections by jumping on a bat or having something boost you off a platform or whatnot. And Bloodlines, that's not really a thing. It's, it's you have to fight what's in your way, especially because, as I said during the run, there's 22 flipping sub-bosses and boss fights throughout six stages. So that, uh, that it was classic Castlevania, but with its very own style. So that kind of kept me hooked on it. And then I learned how to never take damage in CV games because, well, you just have to reset if you do. In that <laughs> game. But then you ran CV1, the exact opposite. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was really fun. And Rondo. Uh, yeah, Rondo, and Rondo is almost as bad because... It's just like, once you have your loadout in that game, don't ever lose it or you're not going to do well. So, um, But Rondo was fun because I got to mash buttons on an arcade stick to play it because it's the only way I can run it because <laughs> I'm a scrub with my hands. I want to hear your two origin stories, too. Um, so I'll tell for, mine after. So for myself, uh, Ario Sorry was a game I played when I was younger. Uh, a game came out when I was like five or six. I played it then. Um God, I feel old. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will throw you off this table. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're both the youngest. All yeah. The way. <laughs> um, and I look when I got into speedrunning, I looked up speedruns of it, and I actually started off as a Julius mode speedrunner. Which anyone who knows me now probably thinks that's really funny because <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty outspoken about not liking Julius mode now. But um, yeah, I did start as a Julius mode runner. And I think at the time I said, like, I'm never speedrunning so much, which is really <laughs> fun for anyone who Just asked me missed. now. Yeah. Um, never is a term you don't use yeah. in speedrunning. And don't that say was it. in, like, early 2015. And then in late 2015, I started speedrunning Soma. Um, and it just kind of snowballed. I got Soma all bosses into SGDQ 2016. I had fun prepping for that run. I learned more categories. And eventually I just got pretty good at the game. And now I have, like, every Soma mode world record. And it, that's kind of how that happened. And oh, did you get glitchless back in the last couple weeks? No, but I'm going oh, okay. to. It's oh, free okay. right now. Yeah, it's I know free. it's free right yeah. now. Um, it's a really cool route, too. Yeah. You should watch new glitchless yeah, runs. Are you sorry, glitchless is a really cool category. Yeah. That's um, the one Metroidvania I'm actually, like, other than him forcing me to learn Soten, like, Aria is a cool game. Oh, well, I can teach you the, the basic Aria route in, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. I think I taught Mecha of that. Sweet. But, um, it's very beginner-friendly, yeah. yeah. As for Harmony of Dissonance, uh, a lot of people in the Aria Osiris speedrun community ran that game. It's also a GBA game, so there's a lot of overlap. Um, yeah, and I saw it, and I was like, wow, this looks really dumb. I want to try it. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got pretty good at that game, and I ran it at this last AGDQ. It was fun times. So yeah, that's pretty much my Castlevania story. DS venues are sick. They're the next part of the story for sure. Yeah, DS venues are great. Um, hey, uh, I started uh, having an interest in speedruns actually through the GDQ events, like I knew that it was a thing that I like wanted to do just because I liked playing through games fast anyways, knowing that there was a community and that there was like ways to learn more and find people to talk about uh, speedrunning and whatnot. That really kind of drew me in. So I started watching, you know, YouTube VODs, streams and whatnot. And eventually, like after messing around with a couple of like, you know, games that I liked from my childhood, I knew that there was a speedrunning scene for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. But um, at the time, the route was wolf clipping for the Richter skip. And my first stream I ever did of that game was me, like, just, like, throwing my head at the wall, literally, <laughs> <laughs> to try and get that trick to work. And um, th that was actually the same day that the wolf, I'm sorry, the bat um, skip for oh. Richter skip. <laughs> well, hey, at least you got it once, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I was able to do it once before, <laughs> not in a run, but that, that same day was when... Um, it basically became popularized that we won't need to do such a difficult skip to actually finish the game. So it became a lot more beginner friendly. And I actually started learning from there. Learned a lot from that guy over there. <laughs> a lot of his stuff, even though his stuff is really, really dumb. And you shouldn't do. <laughs> I think I was like at a like an eighteen thirty something time, and I'm like, I think I'm ready to do library floor skip. Which, no, you're not ready. To do. <laughs> you're not ready. Are you me. ever ready to do library floor skip? I'm not ready to do to library be fair, floor skip. Up until <laughs> the last two records that were claimed, you didn't need it yeah. to get records. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's not that important. It's that yeah. fun point when you get to a run. It's like, hey, you know that dumb trick that we can all do, but it's not actually required? Well, now it's required. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's mostly been it. I've tried to dabble in other games like slowly, but this game, Symphony of Night, keeps dragging me back in. Yeah. There's too many K- categories. Kind of has a lot to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Every time I'm like, I think I'm done, there's like a new, like, not even necessarily a new category, but a category I haven't tried out. Like, hey, have you tried low percent mist yet? It's like, uh, I guess I have to. <laughs> <laughs> like, I haven't done a run oh, of it yet. P- PSP Pacifist is oh my the, God. the hot stuff right now. It's possible? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you, you wrong warp everywhere. You don't have to kill any bosses, like, besides Dracula, I guess. But yeah. if you've never doesn't seen, count past. Yeah, uh, PK did a couple runs. Yeah, if you've never seen a PlayStation Portable Soten on the Dracula X Chronicles, that's another really underrated Castlevania run you should check out. <laughs> uh, so, Rum. Yeah. Um, so, this will probably be a little funny to uh, people, but... Up until CVHD came out, Soten was actually the last Castlevania game I played out of all of them that existed to that point. Um, so I started with Castlevania 1 as a kid, loved it, just kept playing. The- no, actually, I take that back. I rented Castlevania 2, had no idea what was going on, figured that I was an idiot, and then got Castlevania 1 instead, thought maybe I'd learn the game better if I had like, played that first. So, that um, helped. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> then um it uh years down the line um uh, before I was a speedrunner I was doing let's plays on YouTube and the hot game at the time this is when YouTube was like brand new was I want to be the guy mm-hmm. not sure how many of you remember that um I want to be the boshi took a lot of ideas from it uh and it's also better, but that's fine. And uh, I, but I want to be the guy. I had this. I, I had not played Soten yet at this point, or had any reason to play it. I had just played Aria of Sorrow, maybe like the DS Manias, and I was like, okay, these are cool, but like, I don't, I don't really own a PlayStation or anything. I have no, I, no reason to play Soten. So, um, but then I got to the part in I want to be the guy, where Kayan is reciting. Uh, he's the developer of the game. Was reciting the lines to the opening cutscene of Soten. And he was doing it in the little kid character's voice, and he was like, Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! And it was just like, what is going on? Then Dracula throws his glass at you, and you die at the end of it. So (laughs) um, at the end of all that, I was just like, I have no idea what just happened, but now I want to play this game. So so that's what pushed me to play Soten. Um, Then before... Uh, I, I watched speedruns of it after completing it finally and right before classic games done quick. Um, the night before, I, I'd never done a speedrun of it yet, but the night before classic games done quick started, I was like, oh wow, th- this looks like stuff I can do. Uh, like, do you want to race to Rain, who is the person running it at the time? And he's like, yeah, sure. Oh, let me teach you a few of these tricks you don't know yet. And then we race the next day and I accidentally won, so I got it. <laughs> Rom Scout accidentally touched a game for the first time and got a good time. Un- unheard of. Yeah. So, yeah. so I am actually pretty fortunate that my very first like uh, attempt of any kind on Symphony of the Night after I had the cutscene skips unlocked was like streamed and recorded. So yeah, that's <laughs> do, really cool. Do have that for posterity. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's. Um, so I, I then I just became obsessed with the series all over again after that. So like, this is a question to both of the Soten guys. Um, what do you say that glitches are like the thing that defines Soten to an extent? Um, it's like what are the pillars of Soten? Like movement, yes, glitches, yes, <laughs> and being okay with just hating everything at small bits of time. Just small bits. Just okay. Well, it. I'm good on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The game is very punishing to um, when you really push the game, it pushes back for sure. It's yeah. it's one of those games that has such a depth of like skill to it. Like optimizing it is always like a challenge, yeah. um, at least from what I found. And like I don't know, there's people that like you think that you've done like everything you can, and then we're fortunate enough to have some random guy spring up and be like, oh, you know, there's like a three second time save in this room that <laughs> is like no one's ever thought of before, <laughs> and that happens like all the time. So. Yeah, um, it, it definitely is a lot more beginner friendly than it used to be as well. Like now there's great tutorials out there to follow. There's consistent setups for a lot of these hard glitches we're talking about. Like you can use the map to just uh, basically find the frame you need to do the next input on with buffering. So it's mm-hmm. it's a lot easier than it used to be. And I would yeah. definitely say the appeal definitely does come from some of the insane glitches that this game has. Like it is 
absurd that they shipped this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what draws you in. And then I think the, the movement's what keeps me coming back yeah. to it. Just, like, the depth of it's all these so mechanics sad. that I never knew existed until, like, five years into speed running it. <laughs> Would you guys say that Soden is a janky game? Um... It can be. If you're trying to cast a spell, yes. Yes. <laughs> Relat okay, relative to other games, would you say it's pretty janky? Uh, I would say it's now pretty consistent. Okay. Um, unless you're going for the absolute most absurd route. Like, if you're doing, like, let's say all bosses with every floor clip that we know that actually saves some amount of time, then, yeah, that's janky. Nobody yeah. should. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> but if you go for a more consistent conservative route that, you know, wants to complete the game, then I wouldn't say so. Yeah, it's, um, I, I compared the game a lot to Super Metroid just because it's not that hard to do a basic route and, like, uh, pick up a lot of categories for the game, but then the moment you're trying to get to the deeper stuff, get to where you are starting to save five seconds off your PB instead of, like, two minutes, then it's pretty difficult, and you're going to spend a lot of time doing that, and... Hopefully enjoy it the whole time, but you got to be careful of, like, well, I didn't get this from Soten, but <laughs> similar things have happened to people. <laughs> yeah. I, I would interject. I don't run Soten, but I've learned enough, especially from Mecha Richter. If you're talking about Richter mode, input can be kind of janky because oh, you're yeah. you're being asked to do very complex fighting game inputs with very weird moments where your input is either locked out or just flat out not read properly. And yeah, that's... Yeah. I, at least you guys kind of like wing smash you got a pretty friendly buffer to work with that the only issue is like with screen transition yeah but that's for like every category but like the game doesn't like screen transition. but richter <laughs> mode is just like oh did you bonk a wall yeah there's four frames nothing counts now don't touch the controller <laughs> you're dead yeah sure Yeah, actually. Um, so the que what was the question again? Yeah, the the question was uh, we talked about how there are mi the glitches that used to be useful and now they aren't, and are there any that we wish uh, that used to be used that we wish were still in runs? That's essentially what or you're just, asking. Yeah. 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 Are there any like really fun glitches in the game that we wish were still used in runs? And yeah. Yeah, actually, can you just pull up cows? Yeah, I was gonna say this yeah. might be a good. Uh, this is a good. <laughs> this might be a good transition into our glitch demo. <laughs> this is a kind of a minor one, but it's it's awesome. This is gonna take a couple seconds to get there, so feel free to just uh, talk oh, about yeah. anything else as well. So I haven't played. I'll, I'll throw one in from from Bloodlines. Uh, there's there's a couple really um, dumb things that are that are more just coding errors than glitches, but. It would be fun if there was a reason to do the category. There's a there's a very interesting glitch with Lacard, where uh, you didn't see the see him in the run today because it was Morris, but he has a, a super jump where he pole vaults with the spear and and gets a massive amount of height. He goes over a screen high if you, if you if the screen transitions. Um, and at the end of stage four, you're on a platform that's so high you can actually super jump off the screen for like your in in stage pose. Uh, if you do that. Um, the game removes his jumping down attack. He will do the animation, but the spear doesn't exist. Like, it's just gone, and it's gone for the rest of the game. So, it's one of those, like, huh. Yeah. It's neat. It's not going to help you, but it would be an interesting bingo category. Like, <laughs> soft, soft lock RTA? Yeah, like, it's, the game with yeah, because it, it's not quite a soft lock, but it's a, I'm sorry, did you want to use a useful attack? Well, it's gone now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, what's this glitch? This is a uh, cow skip. So essentially, we need to get to this side of the castle, but there's this uh, big old thing in the way. Um, you still use a variation of this in all bosses. This actually used to be in the fastest any percent route as well, though. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm using buffering because I haven't played this game in months, so forgive me. Here, we have this cow, this lovely cow that's going to help us. Um, so essentially, how would you describe what happens here? Uh, they basically... Uh, coded the chapel doorways so that 
whenever you go through his transition, uh, no matter which direction it is, it reads you in both rooms temporarily for a couple frames. So he's tricking it into thinking he's already in the next room already. So if I just go over to the uh, right a little bit, it's going to be past the statue. You could also get out of bounds with this. And a variation of this is kind of, well, not a variation of this, but going out of bounds is kind of useful in uh, the new route. But nothing beats cow skip. <laughs> uh, there's one trick that I could also show off really quickly um, that I still use in runs, even though it's negligible whether it saves time or not. It's just <laughs> yeah. Okay. So to, for reference, this technically does save time in an all boss. Uh, you're doing toadstool, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this technically <laughs> saves time in an all bosses run. However, it saves about three quarters of a second if your menus are perfect and you have perfect placement of everything he's about to do. So it barely saves time, but he still does an attempt, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's one of those quirks that it's like even if I go even, it's like I still did the trick and it's in my PB. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is to get into the catacombs where you have to fight Legion normally, and all bosses. Yeah, normally you would go this way, go down, and then go through this uh, transition door here. But instead, what you could also do is um, I'm actually in that little corner there. If you take damage while you're stuck in a corner, um, I guess it just like ejects you. Uh, yeah, downward. it's basically like, the same as a zip. Yeah, it, it just zips you. It down. looks really funny. So you can make yourself take damage by collecting a toadstool. So I have to just like get myself in there. Oh. All you have to do is yeah, that, and it sends you down there. <laughs> it's negligible whether it saves time, but it's so great. And if you're playing on the PlayStation version and do this, all of the palette is just like messed up. And it's like a garbled mess that you can't like actually play on. Yeah. But I recommend you check out the uh, all boss. What's all bosses? All relics. Tool assisted speedrun. Oh my! Oh gosh, yeah, that has some good stuff. That, that's that some does, really good that stuff. That does go to the glitchy catacombs. I can do the the elevator one too. This actually saves no time in any category, but it's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, so, is there anything bad about that? No. <laughs> where is it? I just have to find the save. Just some kind of all bosses file that has gravity boots. Here. It's fine. It's right here. Okay. How do you play this game? I <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Castlevania speedrunning panel. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so in the unpatched Xbox 360 version, uh, you can actually take the elevator down all the way to the bottom. Uh, then you can also take it down further than that. So I pushed down there, and this happened. Um, <laughs> if you don't have gravity boots, the soft walk. But thankfully, you have a really humorous exit with it if you um, if you do have gravity boots, and it looks kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's talk about one in Aria real quick. Uh, is there like one that takes a bit to set up so I could talk about? Oh this? yeah. Um, so while he sets this up. To talk about a glitch in Aria of Sorrow, it's called the Shop Glitch, and it almost lets you do lets you do pretty much anything in the game, including pull up the game's debug menu, which has its whole own set of effects, including setting you to level 99, giving you every item in the game, letting you move during cutscenes, and my favorite, turning you pink. Just, you become <laughs> pink. That's it. I actually don't know for Circle of the Moon, like, besides the stuff you see in Magician Mode runs, like, what's the extent of glitching in that game? Yeah, so warps are, like, super important, so they obviously save a ton of time. Bone floating, there's one that you do in the waterway that saves a ton of time. There's a couple others that you can do that save, like, minimal amounts of time and are a lot tougher to uh, set up and get. But other than that, there's a texture glitch that you can do. There's a certain DSS combo that has, like, a charge sword attack, and if you, have, uh, if you go ahead and bone float, go up to the top of a ceiling, crouch into it, and then switch to that DSS to charge attack, you press the button, you tap it, and then you hold it again, it'll start the charge, and then you can actually switch off of that DSS and go to something else. So if you switch back to the skeleton DSS, while this charging animation is just kind of sitting on you, you're not actually pressing it or doing anything, it'll like create these weird like skeleton glitched like, <laughs> I don't know, it's weird. And then every single DSS combo has like a different weird texture glitch that surrounds Nathan. And uh, you can actually stack them, too. So, like, if you just do it again, bone float up, 
charge the thing. You'll get like a few extra circles around you as you're charging it. Come down, switch to another DSS, and then you got just like a big jumbled mess of like two different, you know, or like two parts of that same texture glitch just like stacked on each, on top of each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty useless, obviously. <laughs> So this is a variation of the reverse shift line. Super useful for speedrunning. This one, um, it, this particular strat is like four seconds slower um, with all the menuing and everything, but it's way cooler. Um, I don't know if I necessarily got the reverse shift line there, but we'll see. I might have scrolled the screen a little too far. But essentially what ends up happening is I'm trying to uh, go an entire screen's length over while um, this, that's what this glitch is setting up right here. Um, it's kind of technical, like how it decides to do that. There we go. So <laughs> it just zips you to the bottom of the shaft, and you're almost like guaranteed to get hit by that guy. But it just, for whatever reason, when you're in a wall in this game, it just likes to zip you downward um, until you hit something that it can't mm -hmm. go past. That's funny because most of the games after that, it actually zips yeah, you up. Ari yeah, Faro, yeah. Harmony of Distance, yeah. you yeah. go straight up when you're Dawn, in the wall. Dawn of Sorrow, you go upwards. Yeah. Like, um, Fortune yeah. of Ruin and Order of Ecclesia don't have glitches. Well, oh, order excuse me? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. I Portrait believe there's a video on Romscat. Portrait of Ruin also has a lot of glitches. Yeah, Portrait of Ruin has yeah. glitches. Yeah. 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 Order what? of Ecclesia is uh, pretty unique in the series. It's a, one of the DS vanias in that it does not have any glitches that are useful for speedrunning in the any percent run. Yeah. yeah. I believe it's... You can get a crazy fast boss rush, though. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah. But, um, Bloodlines is really similar, actually. It's, it's not a game that gets abused by glitches. Mm -hmm. It's all just maximum output of of the game's engine the the zip is not even really a glitch so much as just a weird a weird decision they made where when you jump and toss a sub weapon as you're rising in your jump you get just one extra pixel of height um and the only so they built a pixel that was one pixel over maximum that the piston that i jumped on to do the zip uh is one pixel over maximum jump height unless you throw a sub weapon. So that's the whole reason that that zip works is you basically are standing on top of the piston, which doesn't count as a crush plane. And then you're zipped into a wall, which it has ideal old school zip mechanics. You can actually control which way you go and it just ejects you out the wall, whichever way you're holding. So, but uh, Bloodlines is very not glitchy. There are glitches, but there's none of any real import for speed. And, and uh, the tool assisted runs are actually really fun to watch because they're just absolute abuse of RNG and hitboxes and, and raw time saving as opposed to like, here, I'm going to circumvent this boss with a glitch kind of thing. So mm -hmm. Bloodlines is a ridiculously stable game in that that, that aspect. Uh, question in the back. Yeah, so in Aria of Sorrow, like... Question. Oh, the question, yeah. Oh, yeah, the question. So the question was, is there any theoretical skips in any of the games that could open them up a lot? And there's a big one for Aria of Sorrow, which is um, some form of early shop. Like I said, the shop in that game is very broken. It allows you to do a lot of things. Um, so, But the bad thing about the shop is you need to beat the third boss to do it. And there is a way to get to the third boss fast, but finding a way to uh, beat that boss without or to open the shop without beating that boss would open up a lot uh, early shop. It would open up the ability to do reverse boss order. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that. Uh, for Symphony of the Night in particular, there's one thing that comes to mind. So it's not necessarily like that we are unable to do this trick due to any sort of physical limitations. It's just pure luck. So there's a particular item drop that it's like what one in uh one in four thousand or so <laughs> or so <laughs> that you have a chance so it's essentially two item drops there's an item that drops from an enemy that gives you a random chance of a different item once used so that whatever combination permutation comes out to be about one four thousand yeah. and that would give us a toadstool early enough to use it for a skip in the um in the beginning of the, the clock game. rush. Yeah. Yeah. When when you go back to all rocks' quarters, normally you get the wolf relic first. Um, go all the way to the top of the outer wall, come back, and then you can like dive kick off the candle to go to the Coliseum after that. But um, if you get this toadstool drop, then you can uh, do a pretty elaborate. It's actually a pretty elaborate setup because you have to get hit by a certain skeleton from a bone in order to fix what direction the toadstool throws you. 
because that's random for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you get it to then throw you left, and then you have to do, like, pixel and frame perfect uh, placement of the toadstool and punch it, and then you just get knocked up to the, the clock. So it's like... That has a potential to save, like, close to three uh, minutes? It would cut two minutes off the clock rush, but then you're bleeding a little bit of time uh, because you don't have the wolf relic after that do some skips. So it's, like, a minute and a half still. yeah. And it's still useful in literally every category that has a clock rush. So yeah, you get it in one. No, category. no one's Great. actually accomplished a run with it yet, though. <laughs> yeah. Mataco got the drop, didn't he? Once. Oh, Italic. Uh, so Italic Zelda, um, who actually has the current world record for any. Yeah, percent, shout out to Italic. He's he, done uh, a lot for the Castlevania community yeah. in general. Yes, and his very first run of the game that he streamed, he actually got that total oh drop God. and had no idea what to do with it. He just, <laughs> he just knew that it existed. Like, wow, I just got something important, didn't I? <laughs> and um, yeah, he's never gotten it since. And I don't think any of the rest of us have, except, no. yeah, Mataco, I think you... Yeah, I think Mataco's gotten it once. He's another really good Symphony of the Night runner. Yep. Um, sort of the opposite. There's a category, a certain game and category that basically can't be any faster and that is Harmony of Dissonance Maxim Any Percent. Uh, if you've never seen a run of it, if we have time, I can show a run. But um, if you've never seen a run of it, the world record is 29.95 seconds. Um, you it go was up recently beat by one frame, like earlier. No, Awada tied it. So oh, two okay, people okay. have 29.95 now. Wow. Wonderful. Uh, and then they, they were going back and forth, like frame at a time yeah, for yeah. months too yeah. on this. <laughs> uh, they had, a, which is impressive because finishing a run of the hardest is extremely difficult. So the fact that they've been able to optimize it at all is extremely impressive. Um, but yeah, that category is you dash for six seconds, and then you hit a candle, and that candle makes you go really fast backwards, and then you go on a wall, and then you go up, and then you're in Dracula's chamber for some reason, and then you kill Dracula, and that's it. <laughs> Great run. You actually have to do a lot more inputs than he was describing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's work, very though. difficult. It's a lot harder than I made it sound. In all of those is a bunch of frame-perfect tricks. Yeah. Don't worry I think, about it. I yeah. think the 30-second speedrun has 20 frame-perfect inputs. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> we counted it once. Or and, and if you, uh, like, that's a game where the map of the game is not connected logically. Like, in, yeah. in the code, it's way different than you normally would go through the screen transition. So... Mm -hmm. There's sometimes if you go through a certain screen transition where it crashes the game, and that happens on a lot of those where they're getting like a perfect pixel in between uh, two crashes to get the next screen for this run. <laughs> and to make things even better, Harmony of Dissonance has critical hits for some reason. Oh, yeah. So now, <laughs> yeah. so now basically how up. fast your run is is how many crits you can get on Drac. So you have to execute all the frame perfect stuff and then get a good Drac and roll high. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess to continue off that question, I have one for Circle of the Moon that I was theorizing a little while ago that I'm more or less certain that isn't possible, but um, I've never really tried it, so it would be interesting to uh, to finally try it. This might take a little bit of setup, but there's a lot of areas in that game where at the very end of the area, there's a spot that you have to slide through, and it just kind of puts you into the next area, basically. So at the very beginning, there's a spot like that in the kind of the vertical shaft in the catacombs that to the left of it is the underground warehouse, and that's where death is, pretty much just to the left. And um, we can actually get inside these tiny little spots. Um, the way to do that is to be crouching and then whipping forward. The only way to do that is to have a um, frozen enemy. Well, what we would do is like a, a, a rock enemy, I guess. You would freeze them with the with the rock DSS. And then as like the moment that they're getting unfrozen, you whip and you're kind of just moving forward as you're crouching by doing that. Um, in this scenario, you can't, in this scenario, you can't do that because there's no enemies to um, freeze and then fall down forward off of that. So my idea was if there was a way to get to this loading zone, it would be to get on top, go out of bounds, go on top of where that, where those catacombs start and then basically do a bone float blind. So you would be on top, do the bone float off of the left edge, and then just start floating up and just keep floating up. And um, what's interesting about that game is when you go out of bounds, you actually don't soft lock. Um, it takes about two to three minutes, but you actually wrap around to the bottom side <laughs> and vice versa. If you fall down, you wrap around to the top side. So if you're floating upwards, you're gonna float upwards and then kind of like graze against that loading zone 
and then maybe I don't know, like if you tackle into it or <laughs> yeah. whip into it or something, maybe it'll activate it. But it requires you to do a blind bone flow out of bounds, so <laughs> that's the thing. Um, Theory crafting and routing in speed runs is way more fun than doing the actual runs. By the correct, way, correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Bloodlines. Uh, for reference, the Taz's for both characters are two minutes faster than my PBs, and I've been working and rerouting that game for seven years. Um, I've tested some of like the Taz style boss fights with an Everdrive, uh, Gear Steamer being a specific one. The Taz fight beats Gear Steamer probably 10 to 12 seconds faster than I can because it involves jumping in the middle of his hitbox, doing a frame perfect whip attachment, and extending an exact number of pixels at different ratios and then re-whipping back and doing the same thing. Uh, it's all just perfect physical execution that I tried for probably three hours one day. I couldn't even get the first like phase of the fight. So there's all sorts of theory out there that I could try and add, and that's what Bloodlines has been. It's been, how stupid can I be and add another Taz trick into this? <laughs> all right, that one worked. Um but yeah, even with all I've I've added in, my runs are still over two minutes slower than the than the actual Taz's. And like I said, that's it's not through glitch abuse. It's just they are that optimized with every aspect you can do in the game. So we actually have a question down here. So the question was throughout the entire series, what's the most beginner friendly run to learn? Castlevania uh, one. Yeah, I would agree. Okay, um, <laughs> I have a different answer. I think that's a good answer, but yeah, yeah. I have a. I'd say Castlevania. Ari I'm biased, but Aria of Sorrow, no zero HP glitch, is a really uh, beginner friendly category that's because true. you can make the final boss fight pretty free. Um, yeah. There's a glitch in that game, shop glitch, that lets you get 200 potions, so you can basically never die if you're just careful about healing. Um, yeah. Similarly, Portrait of Ruin has an infinite potion glitch. That also um, helps, yeah. So those two would be good if you're worried, because dying is oftentimes... Uh, yeah. For reference, I learned both of those runs in less than two hours and got, like, runs to finish, so yeah. they're pretty... Yeah. Granted, I do have some experience, but, like, it's, mm -hmm. they're yeah. pretty free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Metroidvania, I think, definitely. CV1 is actually a game when people are like, hey, I want to get into speedrunning. What's a good game to start with? I will actually recommend Castlevania 1 quite regularly yeah. because it has a huge range of of tricks that you can get a very solid run with doing none of the advanced tech. All you have to learn is what sub weapon to use, where to damage. It's boost. holy water, by the yes, way. Yes, it is holy water. <laughs> um, that is once you learn how to use it, uh, you you can get sub thirteen in Castlevania one with very minimal effort. Uh, you don't have to be a super yeah. experienced. You took speed well, you took like a week to get sub twelve, I think. Right? It was it was about two weeks. Yeah. Um, and it, for reference, like it spent it took Funk Doc two years to get his 1206 or something yeah. like that. And Funk Dog but was that's notorious. Just, for that's grinding. just before the speedrunning yep. community grew to how gigantic it is now and yep. people made consistency for everything yeah. in their own. So. But, but yeah, I, I I recommend CV1 is actually like, I've never yeah. speedrun, but I like classic 2D platformer yeah. as well. It's a, it's a perfect game to learn how to speedrun and it does all the the stuff you would want to focus on and learn how to, to, to do with speedrunning. It teaches a very straightforward route uh, it teaches resource management, both with your health and sub-weapon ammo. And uh, the movement is completely uncomplicated because you can only walk one speed and your jumps are committal. So. Yep, and the uh, damage boosts in it look really cool and they look fancy, but they're actually really easy. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. none of yeah, them I, are like, super hard to do. Yeah. I'm a big noob in that game, and I messed around with them once, and I got them in a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's it, it makes you feel real good. Like, <laughs> you're just like... Oh, is this just straightforward? And then you start learning critical hits, and you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that um, if you try and match the Dracula fight in a world record type run, yeah, that's not happening for a while. <laughs> uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so I'm actually going to set my laptop and do a maximum any percent run for you guys, uh, just to show that off. That'll sure. be fun. Meanwhile, while I'm saying, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about, like, what your favorite part of your Castlevania speed game is, or just the series as a whole, like, as a speed series. Sure. So I'll get set up real quick. Sure. I'm gonna let you sit up here yeah. too, so we'll swap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can start. I mean, yeah. Um, my favorite. Let's see. This is hard. My favorite part of Bloodlines probably is stage four. Um, because it 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 was what slowed me down learning the game for a long time because I knew I wanted to do blade skip. 
uh, learning how to do the clock tower climb with Morris was incredibly difficult. And I started with Morris. I didn't play the card at all. Um, so learning all that was really fun. I'm, I'm very, very partial to that because Blade Skip just... One, it looks really weird because people are like, "That's is that just background? What is? Why is he avoiding the other ones? I don't get it." <laughs> and then I actually have the, the the hitbox viewer image of that that room queued up for people who watch the stream, so I can be like, "This is why this works." And people look at the blade and they're like, "Why aren't there boxes?" And I'm like, "That's because they're four pixel dots and they're very very small." Um, so I'd say that's probably my most partial. Um, but as a series and a whole, I'll speak more from the classic CV side since that's what I focus on. Um, those games are all very notable for being a lot of people who grew up who are my age. I'm the old one, by the way, if you haven't figured it out. Um, <laughs> those were notoriously hard games. Castlevania 1 and 3 are games that like I'll, myself and a lot of my friends like all played and we couldn't beat because they were notoriously difficult. So they fit into that category of it's really cool to see a game that traumatized your childhood just get completely ramrodded. Uh, I thought Castlevania Three was impossible. Yeah, no, for same, many, many years. Same. <laughs> um, but the, they're so good for being speed games because they are so simple. There's there's very little complex mechanics. CB Three, obviously, you get partner switching, and they all have their unique abilities, and it's it's very advanced at this point. But inherently, you don't need to know much. It's it's jump and whip. Like, it's the same reason that Mega Man is a very popular series. You you have limited options, but you utilize all those options very effectively. Um, and they're they're the kind of speed runs that you don't need to be familiar with the game or with speed running to be able to watch and go, they're doing this really oddly, but it's fast and it's kind of neat. So, um, that's kind of why I've always been drawn to those games. I like. When I route, I'm very much a puzzle piece kind of person. I like I want to do a room and be like, how do I optimize this room? And then opt you know, kind of do one piece at a time and then make sure it all flows together with sub weapons and all that kind of thing. And the Castlevania games are are perfect for that style of routing. Oh, hey. Um the question again was what the favorite part of yeah, the favorite part of your game and then the series as um, running. Oh, man, there's so much to love about Symphony of the Night, honestly. It's my favorite game of all time, so I'm super biased. But uh, the soundtrack is the best soundtrack of all time. The uh, Don't at me, if you guys <laughs> don't. I said that earlier today, and then it just turned into a big joke with some of my friends. But it is, in all honesty, my favorite soundtrack in any video game. The sprite work is amazing. The way that the game flows from a casual standpoint all the way up to speed running it and even everything in between if you're just glitch hunting if you're just like pushing the game as far as you're willing to there's you're going to be rewarded in some way and like almost at every level of the game gives you something like really nice to like just do i don't know and so it's hard to pick something in particular i l think the thing that has kept me around the longest as far as speed running goes is the optimization of the movement itself is so rewarding like knowing that how finicky the input reader is in that game and how you can humanly manipulate it to go fast is like when you just get that run that's just really like just a solid piece of like technical um, work from yourself and it, it's just the best feeling ever. The thing that's kept me around on Symphony of the Night the longest is that the fairy, when she rests on your shoulder while you sleep in a chair, has a 1 in 255 chance of singing a song for a minute. Never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I try and re-roll that every few, usually off stream, but I do try and re-roll that every few hours. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, probably the, the coolest part of Symphony of the Night to me is uh, first castle route of all bosses because yep. the any percent route, um, the entire run is like 16 minutes, and there are actually only three major glitches in that uh, that you come across that make a huge difference in the run. The all bosses route has 11 zips in a five minute stretch. So <laughs> it just, I don't, usually when I'm doing an all bosses run, I'll casually talk to chat for the first eight minutes because that's pretty much ingrained in my memory at this point. Then once you start that stretch of nothing but glitches, I can't even explain what's going on anymore. I'm usually just like dead quiet because 
and people are just like, what the hell is going on when they're in chat? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's just spectacular to watch, and it's a lot of fun to learn all of those tricks in quick sequence. So, yeah. Um, yeah, really, I would like to hear the fairy singing the game without having to go to a, a recording first. <laughs> um, I guess, speaking of Soton, one of my favorite moments in just Castlevania playing in general was um, when I was younger, my older brother bought Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Everything. brought it home, and then he had to just, like, go to work. So I just walked in one day after school and was like, what is this? Like, this cool PS1 game. And I popped it in, and man, it's just... Oh, I need to play that game the first time is just so engrossing, especially as a young kid. Like, it just really, really, you know, gets you into that, what we would call now Metroidvania style. And, like, I didn't know what that was. And, like, little did I know that it would just be so, like, addicting and just it just hooks you so well and just, like, exploring the castle and everything like that. Um, I guess for Circle of the Moon, one of my favorite moments, obviously, this is going to sound, you know, a little typical, but, like, if you get good bone RNG... That is super hype. Like, if you get into that last fight, you're just like, boom, boom, boom. You're like, whoa, oh, my God. <laughs> like, this never happens. And most of the time, it does never happen, so. <laughs> there was a funny story off that last GDQ. I was messing around with just teaching people the any percent route for Circle of the Moon since it's, like, what, two minutes? And Well, no, no. The first two minutes are leveling, leveling up. up. So, yeah, it's a little longer than that, but mostly because of leveling up. <laughs> and we would all just take turns, like, seeing who could get the best RNG. And, like, <laughs> at one point, I think I got five big bones in a row. And, wow. like, I oh. nearly cried. It was, like, <laughs> it was that ridiculous. And, of course, it's, like, when only one other person was watching. You could have gotten, like, three toadstools from that. Yeah. Kind of luck. <laughs> I, I wasted it on Circle of the Moon, I guess. But, whoops. But it wasn't really wasted. It was it's yeah. in here. That's all that matters. <laughs> Ancillary, I think my favorite Soton moment ever watching a speed run was one night you were just grinding attempts and you got two meal ticket drops, which is the, the item that can produce the toadstool on back to back runs. You got meal tickets. Both times were cheesecake. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to math this for you because I want you to know what you just did. And I it calculated out to a one in 256,000 odds of that <laughs> happening. <laughs> so I'm like, congrats, you just got toadstool about. 30 billion times, but <laughs> didn't actually get code school, so keep keep failing death skip by. Yeah, um, so before I give, before I show the maximum any percent run, I guess I'll give my answer. Um, this applies to both Ari of Sorrow and the series as a whole. I, I think the uh, movement in the games is really methodical. That's what I like about it. A lot of the times you have to think about what you're doing for movement, and a lot of the times you have to think on the fly because of enemy patterns and stuff like that, and I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. I enjoy thinking about glitches, I enjoy seeing that develop. I enjoy routing, especially that's why I enjoy the Metroidvania so much. Um, the routing aspect is also really interesting. But um, I think it's time to do the fastest speedrun in the series. Yeah, so, uh, by far. Do you like a phone rank? You can time oh, yeah. Let me uh, pull up the timer real quick. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, everyone. everyone's welcome to help time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah pull up your own timer. Feel <laughs> free. Go on ahead in time. All right. All right. Do we want to do a countdown? Yeah. yeah. Three, two, one, go. All right. We're dashing. Um, how would you even begin to explain what's about to happen? Uh, he is going to do a whip, and then he's going to do a launch. It's called a whip, whip. launch. Yeah. Whoa. First try. <laughs> let's go. All right. Now he's out of bounds, trying to figure out how to do things out of bounds. It's a little trickier. Than you do have there. to line up a pixel here. Yep. All right. Yep, there's a chance of soft locking because of that said whole pixel in between two screen transitions thing. He's saving because I guess he's going for sky kick. Ugh, now I have to. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No, that's too low. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a pretty difficult strat there called sky kick that Rom bullied me into doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the safer strat, just going up here. Um, this one's like three-fourths of the way over, by the way. Nice. All right, cool. So this is Dracula's cast chamber in Castle A. For whatever reason. Um... So Maxim's never supposed to be in Chamber A. So when you leave Chamber A, the game wrong warps you to Chamber B. So now we're actually in Dracula's chamber. 
I like how the game's answer to somewhere you're not supposed to be is just go to the end of the game. It's R fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get like a damage glitch via um, having multiple attacks hit on the same frame. Dracula's not really being nice right now. So I'm just gonna do the super attack. This should kill. Yep. Yeah. There we go. And, and that's Castlevania Harmony. No, no, that's not time. Oh no. It's when uh, oh. you grab. Oh, when he grabs so the orb. Sorry. Yeah, orb. Yeah. Or, or, you gotta and always get an orb. Time. There we go. 148 on my. That's watch. actually faster than I did it at AGD. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the uh, world record is three times as fast as that yeah, somehow. Almost four. <laughs> yeah, almost that's four times as fast. Actually absurd. Um, so, do we have any shout outs? Um, super shout outs to, I would say, TurboDog702. He's kind of like the. Shout outs to Ego, by the way. <laughs> shout outs to Ego, yeah. <laughs> Huge yeah, I was going to say, if we're, if we're shouting out every runner who's contributed to our series, there's a lot. Them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, For me personally, uh, TurboDog, he's created the most, I guess, accessible tutorial for the game. He also personally taught me how to play the game, a lot of it, so huge shout-outs to him. Sure. Um, another shout-out is to someone in the... Uh, shout-outs to Epic for loaning his Xbox for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Epic. Yeah, thanks, Epic. Um, shout-outs to Mello for being the biggest Castlevania fan ever. True. Uh... Like I said, Stansky started Bloodlines and kind of laid the groundwork, not just for the speed run, but he helped the the, the tool assisted runners basically uh, build their run, and uh, that that has been where I've taken so much of my own routing and testing from. So so big shout outs to him, and shout outs to some nerd next to me who I never would have gotten to a GDQ without. So um, <laughs> this never would have come this far if if someone hadn't been. No, you're going to GDQ, and I'm going to make sure it happens. Yeah, um, yeah. Shout, shouts to Reign of Soten and uh, Satoru for me. Like, yeah. I would have never gotten into Symphony of the Night and obsessed over the rest of the series as much as I did without them. Yeah, I guess just like I mentioned in my run, big shout-outs to Garnetrex for helping me a lot when I first started learning this game. And uh, still just, like, keeping it competitive, really. Like, he was grinding down the Magician time at the same time as I was, like, really trying to beat him, so... He set the bar pretty high, that's for sure, when he got his 25-48. Um, but other than that, I guess, like, shout-outs to you guys, too, for our, being on the panel with me. Like, it's really cool having, like, really prominent Castlevania speedrunners <laughs> to, like, share this table with. It's really cool. Yeah. Shout-outs to everyone who came. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks for being here. Um, and on a more, more personal nice level, shout-outs to uh, Seth Charlion, who was one of the people who helped me get into RFSR at first. I think today is his son's birthday? Oh, nice. Maybe it's either today or it's very close to today, like this week. Cool. So happy birthday! To yeah, little, he's a cool dude. Little for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, ever since he had his son, he hasn't been as active, but he's still really cool. He also had the maximum any percent world record. Um. Yeah. But cool. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for coming. Right. Thanks to the tech Thank crew. You. <laughs> uh, that's Castlevania, I guess. Mm -hmm.